What's up, Grail Nation? Retro Gem Miner here, and to... Oh, wait. Today we are reviewing the greatest video game system of all time, the Analog NT. Not the Analog NT Mini. That is bullshit for bandwagon poor people who play games off SD cards. This is the real deal. Sells for up to $1,000 on eBay. It's made from salvaged Famicom CPU and PPU chips. So there's zero emulation, zero FPGA except for the FPGA. 100% real accurate hardware. No problems, no compatibility issues. This is the HDMI edition, which means it has an integrated high-def NES mod. The high-def NES mod is actually an FPGA recreation of a Famicom PPU that runs alongside and hijacks communication in between the CPU and the real PPU. So the real PPU acts as a slave that sends the per-pixel color values to the FPGA PPU, which can then create an all-digital signal with no analog in the pipeline. So the real CPU and PPU, they actually run at a clock rate very slightly above 60 Hz, which we need to hook up to our 60 Hz HDTV. So to achieve this, we actually have to underclock the entire NES by about 0.17%, because we can't adjust the CPU clock without adjusting the PPU clock, because then some games will act kind of weird. So we have to underclock this imperceptibly, but I think that's a small price to pay to have 100% compatibility with HDTVs, and that means we lose about one second every 10 minutes as a timing difference. What the fuck just happened? I, th I think I said this has FPGA, which FPGA plus retro games means 100% accuracy, and it also has real Famicom chips, that's like 200% accuracy. So people pay around $800 to $1,000 for this on eBay because they know it's reference quality. This one's upgraded to the latest NES firmware, but the NES originally hey, did- you Mom, you can't- Mom, you can't- I told you not to come in here. So you might notice I have this little 3D printed insert that I designed. So what this does is it actually- it prevents these metal flaps from scraping up against your cartridge every time you insert and remove a game. And it firms the cartridge up- the cartridge slot up because this is loose as shit and it can actually- a stiff breeze. This is not a joke can freeze your game. Are you fucking kidding me? People pay a thousand dollars for this shit? Are people fucking retarded? How can you improve upon a product that's already perfect? That's why they call me the Retro Gem Miner. Oh yeah, so the power button is actually on the back. And there's no reset button. And so it's like the PS2. So the PS2 had a the power switch on the back. And it had the the you could turn it on from the front, but this is like a modern good design. So there's no power button, no way to turn it on from the front, because that's that's good design. So anyway, of course Mario works. As you can see, it's super crisp, super accurate, but it's Mario, a scum of the earth peasant with a Retron 5 could play this game accurately. Notice that every once in a while there's a weird horizontal line going across the screen? Let's slow that down for a second. Honestly, no fucking joke, this is a PPU bug in original NES hardware that you frequently don't see in emulators, which actually means this is running accurately. Point of order, that's no fucking joke. You just learned something. So here's Ninja Gaiden 3, the second best NES game of all time, if not the second best game of all time. So obviously they tested this one a lot as well. And you can see here, perfect, perfect graphics, perfect sound, perfect, uh, perfect movement. Just, you know, per perfect gameplay, man. Yeah! Eat a dick, Clancy! Oh! Oh, shit! I'm doing the review stuff. Shit. Here's where you can really start to see the 100% accuracy of the Analog NT. When you finish a game, you get to this end screen where the developers actually used a technique called Fuck Up All the Graphics Super Bad. 
This actually looks perfect on a CRT, but you can see it looks just a little bit quirky when you're playing it on the analog NT. It's kind of like the transparency effects on the waterfalls in Sonic 2 on Genesis. These are just like glimpses into game development techniques that you can only see by using 100% original hardware, like the analog NT. Now that is accuracy. That is what the developer intended to be on the screen. And emulators don't give you that. Oh yeah, here we go, LJN Wrestling Games. I don't know much about wrestling games myself, but check out the Collector's Quest podcast. They have a sweet in-depth review of wrestling games throughout history. All right, let's see here. Hitman. Oh, Hogan can't choose him anymore. Oh, Undertaker. That, let's go with Undertaker. He's safe. So again, here's a subtle technique that emulators often get wrong. This screen shake effect really emphasizes the impact of the wrestlers as they hit the mat. You can feel like the entire world is shaking around them, and you definitely don't get this playing on a bullshit Retron 5. This is just exquisite. I honestly can't imagine experiencing this game like some mouth-breathing minimum wage beggar playing this on a hacked NES classic. And hey, so check it out. This game is basically just tapping the B button as fast as possible. So you know what we can use? Turbo. The analog NT is 100% compatible with all NES accessories. The fuck? What the fuck? The analog NT is compatible with 90% of NES accessories. So here's the NES Family Feud. Who can forget? Never forget. A lot of people don't remember, but this is the true version of Family Feud that the developers intended. It's like you're looking straight through the game, into the code itself, into the mind of the developers. This is definitely one of the games that really emphasizes the peak of Fuck All The Graphics Up Super Bad. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that this must be some kind of special prototype I have from my sick collection of rare gems, and this is what the developers truly intended the game to be, right? Well, I am going to prove it to you. We're going to play a ROM of Family Feud. Now, believe me, I'm not some destitute $25,000 a year household income with a toddler and newborn on the way, working two service industry jobs, no insurance, undiagnosed anxiety, piece of human poverty who can't afford real Nintendo tapes. But I'm going to show you this game on a flash card anyway. Oh, you think, you think it's not going to happen, but the analog always makes it happen. Bam, what's up? Reference quality. Unparalleled compatibility. So that's the analog and shit. Oh yeah, check that out. The case is aluminum so you could shock it and screw up your game. So that's the analog NT, pretty much the best console ever made. If I, uh, if I didn't mention it cost a thousand dollars, so you know I'm hot shit for owning one. And uh, if you think differently, it's because you're poor and can't afford one. Uh, oh yeah, so I, I've also got like this Super NT. It's made of plastic, so it's pretty much a piece of shit. What? Is that Earthbound?